What is up, everyone? CenterStrain01 here, bringing you Alan Wake's American Nightmare. This is a game that's been on my radar for a while. I know I haven't had the chance to actually finish Alan Wake, and for that I am sorry. My disc was broke for all of you that have watched my previous videos, and I've explained why I haven't been able to finish that. I, however, have recently got the PC version, and I still am considering wanting to go back over and finish it because it is a game that I truly loved everything that I've played of it so far and I know you guys liked it as well you've always told me you wanted more Alan Wake so you know I try to please you guys and do whatever I can to, to keep you guys coming back to me so but we're gonna do the uh, story mode here I haven't uh, put it in I haven't played it whatsoever it's got no achievements uh, it's only got 12 because this is of course a arcade game. This is not a full-fledged game, but I do hear the campaign itself is just uh, around six hours, so we're going to find out how long it is. And uh, if it is six hours, well, then that's uh, longer than uh, The Darkness 2, which I played, I think, and I finished it in four hours, so we'll see how uh, we'll see how long this thing is. But, you know, I love those stealthier kind of uh, some horror games, you know, I can actually stand to play, and this is definitely one of those kind of games that I can stand to play. So we're going to go in here to the options and make sure that we've got the controls and everything set up the way we want it. Everything default, inverted, audio options. Yes, I turn the music down a little bit because I'm more of the ambient noise kind of person when I play these uh, late night games. You know, uh, kind of more of a cinematic-y, scary to, scary to hell kind of games, and I think I prefer that more. So, I think we got everything set here, and I'm going to quit yapping at the mouth and we're gonna enjoy some Alan Wake so let's do it and light that is both ancient and eternal. He is chasing a dangerous quarry, the Herald of Darkness. <laughs> His evil doppelganger, known only as Mr. Scratch. Maybe. But what are you gonna do then? By then, I'll have had my hands on everything you love. has been brutally spat out from the darkness that surrounds the shores of our reality. He has come to fight a decisive battle in Night Springs. Okay, here we are. We are in Alan Wake's American Nightmare. This is the, uh, a separate story from the Alan Wake game. Uh, I'm not sure where it actually picks up, if it's in the middle, if it's the end, beginning, whatever. But yeah, let's do this. It's very ambient, very quiet. It's actually almost a little too quiet, so I think we do want to actually turn up the music maybe just a little bit. I know my voice can get annoying sometimes. So hopefully that'll be a little better. 
So, I am an avid collector. Except the game's not letting me because it's making me do this cutscene right now. Damn you. Okay, so that's obviously where we need to go. So let me look around real quick and make sure that there's nothing down, up, away, whatever. You can collect manuscript pages in this game, just like the original. I probably will not find them all in my first playthrough, but I definitely will at least try. One thing I loved about this game is how it uses the light to kill the enemies. I think it actually makes sense. And it's uh, very well played. A lot of games have used light before to kill enemies, but Alan Wake is the only one that I've really known to make it work. And I'm about to shoot some fools after this cutscene. Wow, you just throw you right in there, huh? What's up, huh? You don't like that? You don't like that? Huh? What? Go ahead and die. Yeah, die. That's what I thought. It's gonna be like that again, huh? Huh? Maybe this takes place afterwards. One thing I need to learn is I need to learn to put my thing on private so all these chat people don't come up. I've never actually really done that before. I've always let people know that I'm still on so they can see what games I'm playing. And But uh, probably maybe in some future playthroughs I'll actually start changing that. So you guys know what type of playthroughs I like to do. I like to talk, I like to look around, I like to uh, really find out what's going on in the story. It just depends on how much I'm into the story. If I'm really into it, then I want to keep going and, and make it as interesting as I can. If not, then I want to kind of explore around and hopefully find something good, a good quality about the game. So This is the first game I've played in actually quite a while. And uh, I'm still trying to get used to you know being by myself again. In it's going to take life, some time. The man was a writer. He still practices that art, forging weapons of war out of ideas. But the violent currents that brought him here have scattered the pages he has written. Okay, so speaking of pages that I have written, here's our first manuscript page. One of 53? Oh my god. Oh, 21 pages. My name is Alan Wake, and I'm a writer. I didn't become one overnight. Like most writers, I struggled with it. A short story here, an article there. Then I got lucky and spent a year as a staff writer on the Night Springs TV show. It wasn't the great American novel of my fantasies, but it taught me discipline and craft, and the difference between wanting to be a writer and actually writing. So, uh, I love the way they do the manuscript pages now. I think it makes more sense and it kind of feels more authentic. Before it was just that white page showed up and he was reading it. But now it looks like they put a little bit more thought and effort into it, so that's pretty cool good stuff. But as I was saying before, Alan Wake uh, previously interrupted me because he doesn't care about my story. Uh, yeah, I've got a lot to talk about, so you know, maybe uh, there's going to be a lot more playthroughs like this where I'm talking a lot more. But of course, you guys know me. I, I never talk during the cutscenes. I try never to interrupt the story. But I'm going to babble some whenever I'm just going around the environment. I don't know if there's any of those coffee mugs and all that great stuff, but I guess we'll find out. Let's see, how do you run? LB. The lights okay. of the motel promise safety. The man senses that the solution to his predicament begins there. That's probably where the cause of the predicament is going to go. I'm just saying, because that's how it usually happens. So, man, there's like so many different ways we can go. We can obviously. Okay, I guess Somewhere that's the way to go. the earth, space itself has been pierced, and from dark depths uh, runs shit. a steady flow of monsters. The man recognizes the hand of his evil double in this. He knows he must put an end to this madness. Well, that's not good. Okay, so how are we going to get out of this one? Okay, sometimes running away is the best option to provide safety. So obviously, okay, it's telling us that we probably should run. I can't stay here now. I ain't staying here. Hey, <laughs> gotcha. 
Oh, sweet. Okay. Ooh, pump action shotgun. Hell yeah, take that sad how many problems you can solve in What? Huh? You can't go inside. And I'm in the light, so they really can't do anything to me. I can kill a few, just to have fun. Oh, okay. Alright, let's run. No! Can't get me. Come on. Come on, Cletus. Yeah. What? The safe haven formed by a bright light heals you. Yes. I see you back there. Huh? Shit. What happened to my light? Alright, unlock weapon crates by finding hitting manuscript pages and blast your enemies with serious firepower. Oh, come on. So there's got to be a couple of manuscript pages around here somewhere. Hello? Hey, escape. Me, messing with the enemy and this real. Ooh, I love that song. I remember that song used to always be in games like, uh, skateboarding games like Tony Hawk's. Oh, no, actually, that was in Skate, wasn't it? Yeah, I think that was in Skate. I can't remember. It was either Tony Hawk or Skate, but it was, uh, very good, good things I used to love. Just picking up a lot of random items here. I don't really see any, any enemies yet. I know, we're probably supposed to go to the garage right now, but I'm just... Checking all kinds of cool stuff. There's another manuscript page. Sweet! Some of the Taken aren't protected by the darkness like their comrades. Instead, their aversion to light is so extreme that they literally split into two when they encounter strong light. It leaves the two halves weaker. But of course, their strength in numbers. It's a disturbing development. The dark presence I faced two years ago was powerful but it didn't have much in the way of imagination. Clearly, the same cannot be said of Mr. Mr. What? I, like, blanked out the scratch part. Okay, we've checked down in here. Nothing. We just need one more manuscript page, and we can actually... This is probably, like, further in the game right here. I'm sure once we leave the hotel, we'd be heading down this way, but another weapons case. Ten manuscript pages, so I guess you can come back here a lot, or maybe for extra playthroughs you can have different weapons. So, we're going to go ahead and continue with the story. What is this? Hey! I know that when I arrive, the clarity of vision I have now may disappear. I've made my plans. i prepared for this. But I know the transition from the dark place will be hard on me. And not just physically. It may affect my mind. My memory. These pages should help me remember and focus. That's worked for me before. Even if that fails, I think I will be able to trust my instincts. I'm navigating my own story. I'm hoping I'll know where to go and what to do. Even if the details elude me. Okay. So we now officially have... Ooh. Let's watch. Night Springs, episode 13. Oh, hell. This isn't going to be good. Is this on? How can you tell? I'm sorry, I'm not very good with gadgets. Ah, that's more like it. I'll be right with you. I just gotta do this one thing. I like it quiet. I bet you're wondering why this is happening. Why am I doing all this? Why am I so hell-bent on ruining your life? You're cramping my style. You've got money, fame, everything you could want. 
But you don't know what to do with it. I do. I'm getting all the things you never had the balls to go for. Having more fun, too. <laughs> Do you know the real difference between us? I'm not afraid to be the center of attention. This poor slob's just collateral damage, really. I mean, I made some information out of him earlier. But this part? This is just for kicks. <laughs> So quiet. <laughs> I can't tell if that's the actual guy or the actor. I mean, I know that's the voice of the guy, but I still could not really tell if that was kind of lip synced. So I wonder if that's how the actual voice actor, because he's a really good voice actor. He's like a guy that you could totally listen to in any game or any book or anything like that. He's got that uh, kind of soothing voice. Okay, let's see what else we got. So all these rooms, I'm pretty sure we probably can't go into. We do, so we can actually get that, which is really cool. This is like kind of very open. Lots of stuff. Ooh, we got a radio one, too. Let's take a listen. Well, here you are. About to enjoy another cool Arizona night with me, Eddie Rodman, the host with the boast. Hey, any of you guys remember Old Gods of Asgard? <laughs> Man, I actually saw them twice back in the 70s. I was just a kid then, but my dad worked at this club, and he'd sneak me in to see bands all the time. You know, talk about an education. Anyway, great band, couple of great albums, solid fan base, and then... They kind of dropped off the face of the earth. Well, now, almost four decades later, they're making a comeback. And let me tell you, these boys have seen a lot of road. There's some serious rock and roll veterans, because they weren't too young even back in the day. Well, now I've got Odin and Tor Anderson, two of the original old gods, in the studio with me, along with their manager, Barry Wheeler. Nice to have you guys here. Oh, hey, great to be here, Eddie. Yeah, hey. Hello. Now, boys, let me just come around and say this, all right? Spring chickens, you ain't. I mean, you guys, you make the stones look young. <laughs> You're only as old as you feel. <laughs> Who you call it old? <laughs> now, your last album was 1978's In the Valley of My Shadow. And then you stopped playing all together after that. Why? And, and what made you do a comeback after all this time? Well, <laughs> it was a sad thing. See, the original bass player for Old Gods, Fat Bob Balder, passed away in... Leukemia! Bob had leukemia, poor bastard. Yeah, after that, we didn't feel like playing no more. Long story short, I ran into these guys up in Washington, and it was obvious to me that they still got it. So I figured, hey, let's make some music, right? And they went for it. Now, Barry, you were a literary agent before this, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, and you were very successful. You represented Alan Wake, I believe, who disappeared under mysterious... Yeah, yeah, yeah that's... Uh, hey, I just want to talk about old gods tonight. Is that cool? Can we do that? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Listen, why don't we take a little break, and then later on in the program, we'll hear the new old gods single. Stay tuned, folks. Well, can't wait well, to hear that. at least Barry landed on his feet. Okay, let's see what other weapon we can pick up with three. Hold down the switch nine to submachine gun. Hell yeah, I'm going to. I guess it's about time I went full auto. Hell yeah. All right, so we're going obviously in there. Oh shit. Is that a babe? Oh yeah. Hey. Ah, she's blonde. I might give it a shot. Hey, I'm, I'm single now, so I gotta keep my options open, you know. So now we finally. Damn, he just picks them all up in one shot, dude. This guy's awesome. All right, let's do it. Let's get our Mac on. Hey, baby. Hey, it's you. There. You remember me, right? Emma? Emma Sloan? I think you might have something that belongs to me. Really? A typewritten page? 
Oh, yeah, that's weird. I, I did find a page like that. I don't even know where it came from. It was all this weird stuff about the oil derrick and a satellite. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Oh, well, I don't know how you knew I had it, but I, I guess it's yours. Listen, what's this all about? There are these really creepy guys hanging around the oil derricks. There's something really weird about them. They're dangerous. I'm gonna deal with them. Try to stay out of their sight, okay? And stay in the light. They hate the light. At the oil derrick, the wheel had been jammed in place and turned until the oil gurgled and flowed thick and flammable. The warning lights were blinking in a fast rhythm, bright and steady, powered by the battery. The Kasabian CD was playing in the boombox, all distorted guitars and intense beat. High above, some piece of orbital junk or another collided with the satellite, knocking it radically off course. Trailing debris, it screamed down from the skies at an impossibly steep angle. All that high-tech engineering reduced to nothing more than a bullet that would destroy whatever it hit. Just to be clear, you should know that we haven't actually met before. Sure we have, Mr. Wake. Remember you stayed at the motel here. No, the guy you're talking about just looks like me, even if he uses my name. He's behind all this trouble. Oh, I thought, um, now that you mention it, I guess your aura looks a lot nicer than his, actually. I'm very sensitive to things like that. There's a bunch of stuff I need to find. The things mentioned on that page? Well, there's a lot of old crap lying around this place. Great, thanks. I think you should be able to find everything, except the satellite, obviously. Are you gonna tell me what this is? I don't think that'd go over too well. Why don't you let me be the judge of that? Fine. The page is a formula for rewriting reality. Either I use it to close a strange portal to a place that isn't in our world, or shadowy serial killer monster things keep pouring out of there. Yeah, you were right the first time. You can think what you want about me, but there's still bad guys around. Be careful. Well, you might be nuts, but I've seen the way they move, the way they look. I'll buy that. They're called Taken. They aren't really human. Not anymore. And they're climbing out of the oil well? What, do they have secret headquarters down there, or...? No, that's just where the point of connection is. It's a hole that leads to... well, it's a really nasty place. That's why I need to close it. And the guy who looks like you opened it, because he was hanging around the oil field before. He gets around, unfortunately. Thanks for helping me. Oh, I wish I thought you were just a nutcase. Actually, I kind of expected you to. Me too. But I feel like this is how it's supposed to go. Isn't that weird? Not really. I get that a lot in my line of work. What do you do anyway? I'm a writer. Obviously. What was that you said about my aura? Oh, I'm very spiritual, you know. I can see auras, but I only use it for healing and helping people. I'm like a wise woman, you know? I give people insight and advice. Look, just because I say crazy things doesn't mean I believe everything. Don't be like that. Maybe you should take a few crystals with you if you're going out there. It might be dangerous. They soothe your energies and focus your mind. It's fantastic. And they help me take out the bad guys? Oh, well, no. Not as such. Yeah, okay. I think I'm... Or I have some wonderfully potent herbal detox depositories. Hell yeah! I'm yeah. Good. I'm good. <laughs> hey, everybody needs a good cleanse every now and then. Nice little cleanse.